Uh, right here it is, right, Joe? Yep, little, that's it. This little section right here, essentially. Did it, did it come up into this woods at all, or this little? Yeah, yeah little it, it did come in t- up into there a little bit. Um, it came up in, you know, on those hills. Th- those were obviously hardwood, um, hardwood hills. And then right down there in the heart, right dead in the middle, is that kind of grown up CRP that was just a massive bedding area. Yeah, right. Yeah. What, what you're outlining right there. And I mean, just torn absolutely up. I got you. Where's the Dairy Queen at? It's it's straight <laughs> to the north. Go up, go up. Oh. Yep. Yeah, just just a little bit, a little bit north. Right, right. Somewhere Wait, that's here. It. No, no, it's right over here to the right. I'm sorry. Move to the right. Oh, right here. Yeah, yeah, that's it, right there. Okay. So where where were the bucks bedding at then? Like you. Yep. So um, the the structure to the east of it is a is a tire shop. Um, a little right bit south, a little bit south of that. Yeah, that's a tire shop right there. And they stacked all their old t- tires to the to the west. Yeah, right in there. And that big 186 was bedded right there. That's where he lived. And the the beauty of this property is that if you go to the to the north of that just a little bit where those other structures are. Mm-hmm. So, yep, right here. This was an old lady that lived there, and she had mowed a walking path that would come south of her structures into that CRP and run right along the north edge of that. Yep, straight down. Yep, just like that, all the way to the end. And then it would wrap up into that neighborhood straight north of there. And she would walk that thing every day with a couple of her girlfriends. And so (laughs) those deer were just totally used to people walking in there. And as I found this stuff out, I was like, my gosh, this is, it. you know, it's unbelievable. And then if you if you really if we were to zoom, okay, you're gonna you're gonna plot that in there. I'm just seeing how far she was from these top, like how far that buck was laying from her. So 50 yards essentially. Oh yeah, that walking path. So if you if you were to really zoom out, you would see when you go west, it starts to get into ag, and there's some hunting clubs or or a, a hunting lease, you know, all the way out to okay. the. And, and yeah, that's yeah. where those deer, that's, that's where he would head at night. The, the deer would head out to there. Yeah. And, and um, you know, he just got in there and, and nobody, you know, it's that old thing. And Dan, you, you know, this is, is well or better than everybody. When, when a spot sets up perfect and just because a big deer gets killed out of there, a lot of times another one will show right back up in there uh, because, because it's, it's just a perfect storm. Yeah. So he had, he had ag about, uh, eight tenths of a mile from where he's bedding at is what this is like the um perfect scenario what we always preach yeah These big ones are on that overlook stuff you found that little overlook section you found the bedding area and you got access to where people that don't go and you're coming from out of state so you're getting in there and uh not over hunting it because you're out of state you get in there at prime time and you just go in there and pick the cherries it's a pretty good setup yeah, that's that's exactly right. I only hunted it on a north and northeast was perfect. Uh, I, Josh, I showed you earlier kind of where the one stand was um, right yeah, there so. in, that, in that corner right there. Yep. And there's a giant hill behind it that the deer never um, came down. Um, you know, it was it's pretty steep in there. So that north wind would blow it right into that ridge. Uh, the only the only issue you had when you walk down that walking path um is you'd have to turn right, exactly right there and, and walk in. But the, the plan was to kill him before, you know, before he got to where you were. Um, and, and I've got actually got all three of those bucks on video, shooting them on video, and, and it works out perfect. Um, all three of them, you know, came in where I could shoot them before they got to where I crossed that gap. Uh, where so would it, you park? Where would you I'd park, park at, at that, I'd park at that lady's house. I'd okay. Park, you know, right there. That's where my access was. I'd, I'd pull in right there. Then I'd walk down her walking path and go, yep, just like that. And I'd cut right. There's a fence row right there. And I'd walk right down that fence row, pop up in my stand, only hunt it on dead north or northeast wind. And, um, you know, if it wasn't that, I stayed out, you know, I, but, but it, I didn't hunt it a lot. I probably, the most I ever hunted it was the, third buck and i probably hunted it four times but we and we ran two trail cameras in there we ran a trail camera basically right there There there's a fence crossing Mm -hmm. right there and then we ran one 
where you are right there back to the uh, east, there's kind of like a little brown open spot. Right here? Yes, huge scrape spot right there. And you can see why, Dan. I mean, you'll know this with that, where they come down off that ridge right there. Mm -hmm. That's where, you know, it's just a little hub for them, and there were scrapes <laughs> all right there. So we know exactly what Everything bucks. meets right there, yeah. Yep, and they um, – they would never show up. The, the the bucks would never show up in there until mid October, mid October to late October. If you want to watch more videos, there's options here and here. And if you want to subscribe, you can just click right here.